If you want to do this again at uh, things like Velvet Underground next year, uh, we're going to do the next show. This is the end of the end of the end of the movie, but of course, we're trying to take uh, some sort of future time. Okay, thank you so much. Have an amazing life. Enjoy the rest of your life. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes.
It's nice. Just looking at her phone, not budging. The train's moving, and she's just leaning over like Michael Jackson in Smooth Criminal. The train's going, she's just... I don't know, people in the back, you're not giving me enough for that. That deserve more. That deserve more. There's people here that are giving some good energy. That's right, no, that's a little bit better. I'll tell you guys a little bit about me. I'm what's called a second generation Canadian. All right, second generation, disputed term. I'll make sure I define it. I am born here in Canada. My family immigrated from Sudan, okay? So my family immigrated. All right, okay, are we familiar? We know Sudan? Right, of course, you, you've seen the commercials. Yeah, so. Yeah, you know, like, you know for, for, for the price of a cup of coffee a week. That's us. For the price of a cup of coffee a week, you can change someone's life. Which, have you seen the price of coffee these days? That's changing my life here. That's, I've had to stop buying coffee. No, it's weird. It's weird being second generation. It's weird because you can't really relate to either of the countries you're from. One of the things you learn quickly in life, both countries you're from don't like you. Right? Canadians don't like me because I'm from Alberta, obviously. Uh, 
and uh, Sudanese don't like me because I can't get them passports. So, no, look, y'all gotta understand, this is, this is the golden ticket right here, man. So many people in the world would kill for the opportunity to live in a place like Canada. People from countries like Sudan, they see countries like Canada like it's a nightclub. And they think you know the bouncer. Right, like I've been lucky enough to go back and visit and every time I go, there's always somebody that'll stop me and be like, hey man. <laughs> Hook up your boy. <laughs> Like I got the Prime Minister in my DMs. Like I can just pull my phone out whenever I want. Hey man, I'm coming back through Canada with some baddies, let us in for free. Like I don't, I don't have these resources. But these guys, they never clue in. They're like, come on, we know you know the guy. Slip him a 20, get us in the back door. And then I gotta be like, listen bro, the bouncer doesn't like me either. He does like looking like me. That's a blackface joke. That's a joke about the Prime Minister wears blackface. I'm never gonna stop joking about that. No, actually this Halloween I'm gonna wear a suit till everybody I'm the Prime Minister. It's gonna be. Sorry? I'd probably do a better job. Okay, I don't wanna turn this into a rally, sir. Please relax. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'm happy to be. I, uh, I got to live in Sudan for a few years. Got to live there. I went to high school there. I went to a British private school, you know, because they saved us. And uh, <laughs> used to get in trouble a lot. I used to get in trouble a lot. Didn't uh, get along well with authority. But like in my defense, all my teachers were Muslim converts from America. I don't trust these dudes, man. You know what I mean? But okay. You know how a lot of white women just kind of go to Thailand? <laughs> right, like to find themselves? I need to find myself, which by the way, you're doing drugs at a full moon party. That's what you're face down, ass up at a beach in Bangkok. <laughs> Found you. Um, but then she comes back, now she teaches yoga, like, like it's a whole thing. So I would say the male equivalent, the male equivalent would be getting in a bar fight, going to prison, converting to a snub, getting out, moving to Africa, and teaching English. No, that's what they do, and I'm saying like, was anybody here raised religious? Round of applause. Okay, I, oh, I don't know how excited you should be, but... I don't... <laughs> yeah, still I am! Uh, and, but, but no, and, and that's good, no, maintain it, keep it, that's, that's <laughs> anything to keep you disciplined, the train is crazy. Uh, no, but, but, uh, like, anyone who's raised religious would know that converts are always seen as the best of the religion, right? They're always seen as the ones who are, like, following all the rules, being all goody two-shoes about it. I look at religious converts the same way I look at people who go to the gym in January. <laughs> I'm sure you adopted a new lifestyle. Change your ways, maybe even change your name. But there you are in February, stuffing your face with pork like a fat infidel. <laughs> and you're right back where you were in December. <laughs> By the way, that's something really common in Islam. When people convert to Islam, they'll change their names to something Islam. Usually it's just their first, so they'll convert to Islam, change their names to something Islam. Fun fact, not a requirement. I'd like to give a big round of applause for everyone whose idea it was to come to the show! Yeah! They need extra encouragement, right? Because uh, those are the people having the worst time. <laughs> it's too much pressure when it's your idea to come to a comedy show. Every job that wants, that's your fault. You don't even watch the show. You just watch the side of your friend's head to make sure that they're laughing. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm, uh, I'm 27 years old. Someone said, ooh! How old are you? Mixed reviews here. Somebody said, ooh, to be being 27, and then he was 
21. And then someone said Natty's a baddie, which honestly I thought was flattering because uh, the trench coat is not giving baddie. <laughs> it's giving uh, detective. <laughs> Okay, what is your deal with 21 year olds? Yeah. What do you mean? You're wearing a Coors Light shirt. And you're slightly harassing a woman, you know? Are you in school? Yeah. For what? Oh my God. And you didn't hear he said business. You know what we need to start doing? Everyone makes fun of art students. I think we need to start making fun of business people. Yeah, not you right now. Although, I would say you're not, you know, the best guy. But, you know, we need to start normalizing. Lots of people with business degrees also go on to work at Starbucks, I'm sure. I don't know, I dropped out of a uh, university. Why is there fog? There's so much fog. I look like I'm reporting on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing a huge new traffic pattern here. I don't want to do any other jokes. I just want to do weather-based material. Okay. Oh, hey, I can tell you this, guys. I just got two years clean and sober. From dating 37-year-old Canadians. But now I have to date people my age, you know, which is 27, um, which seems fine, you know. I had to date someone 21 one time when I was 21, and that didn't, didn't go well, you know. 21 year olds are always trying to get you to play Settlers of Catan. <laughs> yeah, you play that. You said facts, my god. I'm sorry, I, I'm very new to feeling old. Before the pandemic, I was you, you know what I mean? And now I'm like, go do your homework, you know? Yeah, I dated a 21 year old when I was 21, and we had to go to the pharmacy when we were together. Um, and he didn't know this about me, uh, but I hate pharmacists. <laughs> I'm sorry if there's any here. I don't trust you. <laughs> I don't understand why anyone goes to school for like eight years and then just works at Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> you know, what are you hiding? Also, pharmacists keep embarrassing things behind the counter that you don't need a prescription for. You don't need a prescription for Rogaine, or Lice Shampoo, or Plan B, which is what I had to get. <laughs> and there's children here, so Plan B is a special candy that girls have sometimes. And that's okay, they're allowed to have it. <laughs> But we had to go to the pharmacy and, and he came with me for support and I went up to the pharmacist and I said, Hello, good sir, I'd like to buy a Plan B with my own money. <laughs> and the pharmacist said, Why do you need it? <laughs> um, why do I need Plan B? Why don't you fill in the blanks, you know? You went to school for eight years. <laughs> And I turned around for comfort from my young boyfriend, and he had his arms stuck in the blood pressure cuff. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much. I just walked to my car, and I was like, damn, they look like a beautiful couple. <laughs> they did. They looked lovely. <laughs> I, know. I got into an argument with one of my tall friends. He was like, it's tough being tall too, bro. I was like, okay, how's that? What's the, what's the, what's the tough part about being tall? And he said, I'm so tall, bro, I can't fit into some cars. That was his big issue. I was like, that's something you can put in your like Tinder bio, you know what I mean? Women will be like, oh my God, what's that? Like six five? That's crazy. <laughs> That's tall. What do I put? Like, I'm really good at hide and go seek. Like, what do I put? <laughs> Zero advantages. Zero advantages of being short. Even if you're like a bigger dude, like a chubbier dude, you got chubby chasers. I've never heard of little lovers or anything. It sucks. I'm gonna start working out.
too, because, you know, I, I, at least I could be bigger, you know what I mean? Thank you for... <laughs> yeah, I want to be one of those short guys that's super ripped, he looks like a bulldog, you know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be sick. Yeah. I did join a gym, and I don't know what kind, but it was not for beginners. Everybody there looked like they lived at the gym. They all had motivational t-shirts on. One dude had a shirt on that just said, murder it. I was like, murder it. <laughs> Another guy had a shirt on that just said, work harder. I was like, I don't like your tone. <laughs> if I had a shirt made, it would just say, Spencer, you can work as hard as you need to, right? And if you need to take a break in between, that's okay too. Yeah. Right? If your break turns into 45 minutes, maybe you're done, right? You can go home and have a yogurt with your mom. <laughs> say all that on my show. My friends also signed me up with a personal trainer without telling me. Which, tell me, right? As soon as I go into the gym, this enormous man is just standing there and he's like, are you Spencer? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you are gonna be my new project. Yeah, I was like, one of us needs to settle down. But I did do a session with him, because you can't not. And I was on the bench press, and I was struggling quite a bit. And I told him, I was like, all right, man, I need your help now. And you know what he did? He went, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this, man. He's like, no, you got it. I was like, I don't got it, I'm gonna drop it. He's like, no, you got it. I said, I don't. He went, are you a man or a mouse? And I went, I'm a mouse, like really loud. <laughs> that didn't even slow him down. He was like, get the cheese. I was like, I don't want the cheese. <laughs> I wanna go home, have a yogurt with my mom. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. I'm Spencer James. Cheers. I've always wanted to do that. I feel like a rock star. Um, I tried to get sober this year. I tried my best to get sober, um, but I'm really not the kind of person who can do things all at once. Like I really need to kind of like ease into it, you know, like did my toe before. So I started looking up like alternative sober lifestyles. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, like uh, California sober, right? And California sober is when you don't consume alcohol, and you only consume Ozempic. <laughs> Actually didn't even get California sober. I got Suburban sober. And Suburban sober is when you don't drink at all and then you do ketamine in an unfinished basement. <laughs> we call that the Kirkland Signature, where I'm from. <laughs> no, I'm trying to be less reckless. I was very reckless in my younger ages. I'm turning 29 in a month. And that means that a decade ago, I was 19. And I will never be as hot as I was when I was 19, you guys. I was so hot. I would go to the club and I would actually like cover my drink, you know? Thought it was a sport. I'd run around and be like, try and get me. Now I just toss the GHB in myself. <laughs> You know, give myself, give myself a night I'll never remember. <laughs> it's fun. No, I miss being 19. You know, when you're 19, you do dumb stuff. You know, you do the dumbest stuff because nobody cares about you. Like when I was 19, I pierced my nipples for me. Thought I was the biggest feminist, okay? I showed up to the march, they looked at me, they were like, Michelle, we're trying to free the nipple. You just put yours behind bars. <laughs> You can't walk with us. <laughs> no, the real reason I miss being 19 is because I miss the way that men used to look at me. And I know that's not feminist at all. But like I said, they kicked me out, so here we are. Because men love 19-year-olds. They love them so much. If you're with a man tonight, he's thinking about a 19-year-old right now. <laughs> yeah. Men feel the same way about 19-year-olds as like you and I would feel about like a really good bottle of wine. They're like, 2001 was a great year. <laughs> I did that joke last night. I, I, I pissed some guy off. He got so pissed, so angry at me. He stood up, he looked at me, he was like, it's actually 2004. <laughs> I was like, that's some good mental math. 
but super weird hill to die on. <laughs> I'm actually not even a stand-up comic, I'm just rounding up pedophiles. <laughs> it was a trap, you failed. I like to trap men now in my late 20s, you know? Because when I was younger, I cared a lot about what men thought. Like, I was the original pick-me. Do we have any pick-me's in the house? Okay, liars. I see all of you, okay? I was the ultimate pick-me, okay? I just wanted to be one of those cool, chill girls who, like, eats chicken wings and is, like, always ready for anal. <laughs> and then I grew up, and I realized you really shouldn't do those things in that order. <laughs> it's really bad for your digestive system. It's just bone in, bone out. It's not, I don't recommend it at all. No, the real reason I got out of the boys club is because um, I saw that movie, The Wizard of Oz. Have you guys seen that movie? Yeah, okay, that is the original Pick Me movie, okay? That movie is just 120 minutes about a girl who had to fix three dudes. <laughs> okay, her house flies away, she's a dog owner, and she still has to take a four day hike with a guy who doesn't have a brain, a guy who doesn't have a heart, and a furry with no balls. They should just call that movie what it really was. Just Dorothy and the three theater dudes she dated in her early 20s. <laughs> Montreal hates that joke, but Toronto, you guys are artsy, so you get it. You get it. Yeah, I don't care about the boys club anymore. I don't care about what men think about me. That's very freeing in your late 20s, you know? Like, I used to care about what men thought about me in bed. Now, I don't care, okay? I have sex like I'm about to retire. I don't care. Sometimes, I take my legs, I swing them back like I'm a baby being wiped. <laughs> I love doing that joke because all the women are with me and all the men at the same time pull back. <laughs> They're like... And I'm like, that's what you guys get for making us call you daddy. <laughs> you wanna be daddy? You gotta wipe the baby! <laughs> My ex-boyfriend was really into that. He really loved it when I called him daddy. I think it made him feel like he had a savings account. <laughs> For his birthday, I got, got him a little briefcase. I was like, you carry this, babe. I'll carry the financial burden. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun. I'm Michelle Forrest. Have a great day. Michelle! Thanks, man. This is weird, but it's okay. <laughs> I, uh, is anyone doing Sober October? No. No, it's stupid. That's ridiculous. I find it, like, it's fine if you don't want to drink. What I just find weird is, like, I know people who can't get off the hooch for anything their whole life. You're like, please, for the sake of yourself, your loved ones, your kids, stop. Like, no, nothing will make me stop. Then October 1st comes around, someone's like, you want to drink? They're like, nah, I can't. Sober October. That's all it took, huh? It's amazing how, what the human spirit is capable of when you rhyme a month with another word, isn't it? <laughs> or you use alliteration of any kind. You're a sex addict, no, not November, I'm Mormon now. It's fine, actually. <laughs> I feel like the world would be a better place if we just did that for every month. Wouldn't we be better if we had like generous January? Be a little more generous, that's good. A friendly February, it's pretty good. You could have like monogamous marriage March or something like that, that'd be alright. Adultery April, have some fun, let loose for a while. <laughs> and I'll give this marriage bay again. Ugh, fuck, fine. It's a lot of M, so I'll stop the infidelity. Who cheats? Who's a cheater? <laughs> Anybody cheating tonight? There's a lot of us here. Statistically, this is a lie, and you all know it. There are a few infidels. Show yourselves. Man, no, not you. Get out of here. You're like 10. <laughs> Wearing a core shirt? Jesus Christ, man, what are you doing? <laughs> Drinking juice boxes out here wearing a silver bullet until you get real. I am from Alberta, he said it earlier, so... Anyways, I don't know what I was saying, I took an edible, I'm feeling great. 
No, no, no. I, uh, <laughs> whatever I was talking about. Cheating, and you guys lied. That's what happened. I'm not a cheater. I've been with my wife for, man, next month, 16 years, I've been with my wife and I've never cheated. I think that's, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I deserve that applause. <laughs> never cheated. Pretty good. Never been offered. I would. I'd love to. Okay. I am actively trying tonight. I'll be out on the prowl. No, I think even if I did want to cheat, I wouldn't be able to because I've been with my like I've been out of the game since I was 19 and 08, and I was bad when I was in the game. So if you throw me in the game now, the rust it's brutal. Nobody wants to see that. I don't even know how you do that. I, like I don't like when guys talk about cheating and they're like the hardest part would be the guilt. I'm like nah, it'd be the seduction for sure. <laughs> That's just not doable, quite frankly. I grew up around a lot of toxic masculinity. I'm trying to be a good guy, and it always got projected onto me because they like I was supposed to. I looked like I could be that. I don't like I don't know. I'm a taller guy, I'm six five, pretty good. Don't boo me. Shut up, kid. Because you're. I was gonna say something mean. It's fine. You're you're a good kid, and I like you. Shut up. I give you a swirly after the show, nerd. I'm 6'5", I have a deep voice, good facial hair situation. Aesthetically, I'm a pretty masculine package, I feel like. My last name is Sir. S-I-R. My name's Henry Sir. I sound like an American hero, quite frankly. Sometimes people call me Mr. Sir. I'm like, I, I can't handle this power. <laughs> Please, just. I take things too personally. I get upset a lot. My friend, I, and, and there, there is still a lot of the toxic masculinity thing. I got called whipped a while ago when I went back home. I can't be, I'm not whipped, I'm 35 and I'm married, I've done, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a husband, that's all it is, like, how do you appear, it, 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 like, I'm, I'm weak because I'm nice to my wife, I'm a cuck because I'm nice to the one person I said I'd be nice to, I don't know how you appease these savages, you know, and they're just, there's nothing you can do, my wife's like, hey honey, you can drop me off at the airport, I'm not like, fuck that, bad boys are gonna be all over me, take the bus, <laughs> it's Andrew Tate August, come on, <laughs> Yeah, top G, give it up to him, you know? <laughs> Kidding? Not a fan. <laughs> All right. Try and be a progressive guy. I, uh, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be. <laughs> Stay with me. Because it's not even because my politics are changing, it's just the world's changing, and I think this is what it means to be a progressive, is you think you have the right idea, and then a few decades later, you're an outdated barbarian, right? Isn't that just how it goes? Like a lot of you older people, at one point in life, we were like, yeah, he's a Okay, if you're gonna take pictures, do it now before you start laughing. And don't get dressed up for every outdoor stage. This is Beneva, baby, let's ride, champions. How you doing? Yeah! I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. Whoops, fill that in. Um, I'm so excited to now set for a change. I'm doing good. Woo! Thank you. And I, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I know I'm doing good because something deeply upsetting happened to me recently. Here's what happened. I went to the wine rack near my house, and the guy working there greeted me by saying, Hey, buddy, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> which is the most supportive way I've ever been called an alcoholic. <laughs> so he jazzed about it, he's like, all right, champ, you off the wagon, let's ride. Like, what? <laughs> Deeply upsetting to find out you're a regular at the wine rack. But ultimately a good sign, because recently things have been so good, they've started to miss me. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. I'm in therapy right now, we in therapy? Yeah. Hell yeah, what's your therapist's name? Jared? That's a terrible name for a therapist. I do not trust a Jared. I, I'm happy for you. What'd you learn in therapy this week? What'd you learn in therapy this week? Cope, what's wrong with all the you your anger? Hell yeah! Snaps for this dude! And apparently Jared knows what he's doing! Okay, dude, I did lie to you. I should have been clear. I'm back in therapy. <laughs> Which in my experience is very, very different about than going to therapy for the first time. Because <laughs> like going to therapy, no shame, everyone needs help. Going back to therapy is like doing a fifth year of high school because I just cannot learn my lesson. <laughs> Make some noise if you're 
you're from the city. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And I grew up here, man. Toronto's the shit. I grew up in Scarborough. I, uh, you guys Scarborough? Who's Scarborough? Hey! <laughs> Sorry, that's not allowed out here. Gotta put all my silencer. Just choop, 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 right? <laughs> it's good to be here, man. I just, you know what? I was kind of uh, worried because, first of all, when they told me I got to do the show, I was like, man, you want me to do a stand up comedy show for other people who are standing up? It's like, that's just a fight where I'm from, you know what I mean? Just yelling at you with a mic, right? But it's nice to see you guys, man. I, I was worried there's going to be kids here. There's no kids, right? All right, fuck it. Let's let it rip, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was worried, you know, because th let's let's be real, we're all grown-ups, and that's kind of a trick. Like, that just hit me the other day, that I'm a grown-up. We're all grown-ups. Like, when did this happen? Right? And it happens when I realize it happens in small increments. Like, lately I've been realizing I'm, I'm like, relating to people that I don't normally relate to. Like, uh, like homeless people. <laughs> And it's no offense, it's no offense, because we're all people, right? But like, when I was a kid, man, when my family first immigrated here, and we come downtown, and you, you know, a little immigrant, get out of the subway, and you're like, oh, CN Tower, Sky Dome. And then just some homeless guy comes out of the bush, and, <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. And you'd look at them, and as a kid, you would judge. You'd look at them, you'd go, look at this guy, that'll never be me. That will never be me. Then now I'm 34 and I see a homeless guy and I'm like, buddy, I'm one Rogers bill away <laughs> from being right next to you, bro. <laughs> like spare change? I'm like, for me and you both, homie, that's, phone plans are insane. Love Toronto, man. Toronto's the best. I've been all across Canada. I gotta say Toronto is the best because we have the best news headlines. Like, Toronto crazy is the best crazy. Like, yo, do you guys remember a couple of years ago, there was that dude, he made headlines everywhere. But this guy uh, jumped naked into the Ripley's Aquarium. <laughs> you guys remember that dude? Can we talk about him for a minute? Cause he got a quick headline and he was out, but like, yo, we gotta acknowledge greatness, no? This guy looked at a tank filled with sharks and was like, yo, I'm gonna pull my dick up. <laughs> what? What a hero, bro! What was the last time any of us went after our goals in the same way this fucking guy did? Right? It was crazy, cause I, I was like, yo, I gotta find out more about this story, so I looked into it. So the way it worked is that, so this guy's night started off at medieval times, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Which is where any great night starts. <laughs> and you know, he was obviously a white guy, right? Him and the boys got fucking shrammered, bro. <laughs> Me, fucking Chad, Scott, fucking old Milwaukee, bro. <laughs> that shit face, and they kicked him out because he was yelling at some knights or whatever, you know? And where do you go after medieval times? The Ripley's Aquarium! <laughs> That's the greatest thing about that. This guy, like, look, he got hit with a lot of charges. His life is done. This guy's never gonna get a job again. He's never gonna get on a plane again. And he looked at all this shit, knowing the consequences, just lit a match and just fucking burn it, bro. What? Like, what? Right? If you don't believe me, for those of you who haven't seen this story, go home tonight and YouTube Naked Guy Toronto Aquarium. <laughs> Greatest video ever, man. Because it's literally somebody, you guys have been there, right? You, this guy, is like somebody's going through the tunnel, right? With the glass tunnel. And they, and <laughs> and they got their phone out. Like, yo, look at the sharks. <laughs> oh, look at the stingray. Oh, shit. And then the camera pans up, and it's just one naked man. <laughs> what a hero! Just going across the water. Looks like Nirvana's Nevermind album cover. 
<laughs> the best part of that is this guy, security shows up, right? And security's like, hey man, you gotta get out. And that's already funny enough, because if he doesn't get out, what are they gonna do? <laughs> a little 18 year old with a little cheat stash? Bro, you're not gonna jump in there with a shark. But this guy complies, right? The shark guy, he complies, like, all right, I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna get out, right? And he gets over to the side, gets out where all the rocks are, right by the gift shop. You know what I'm talking about, whatever. <laughs> this guy gets out, and for a brief moment, he looks around. And he's taken in this moment of greatness, right? People are cheering him on, there's a crowd, they got their phones out. Like, well, yeah, bro. And he takes in this moment, and then he looks back at the security guard, and he's like, psych, and he fucking jumps right back in. <laughs> yes! Fucking, yeah, follow your dreams, bro. Follow your fucking dreams. And you're sitting here scared to break up with your girl? Follow your dreams, bro. That's taking a stick off with sharks. Come on. Oh, it's crazy, man. I love doing this, man. This is my favorite shit. But when I'm not doing this during the day, I'm, uh, I'm an elementary school teacher. <laughs> a couple of... Oh. This is where your kids are going every day, bro. <laughs> if you're ever curious what does my kid's teacher look like, it's this fucking guy, bro. They're hiring shawarma shop owners all over the TV. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Teaching sick. Just like Jack Meat opened that door and I just snuck in behind him. You guys want diversity? Let's go, man. I'm write my name in Arabic on that resume, you know? I love it, man, teaching sick. They asked me, they're like, do you want to teach elementary or high school? And I remember I was like, you know what, I'm, I wasn't too sure, because they both have their pros and cons, right? But then I saw this video of a comedian by the name of Cat Williams. I remember the video of him fighting that 14 year old kid? Yeah. Getting choked out. And I saw that and I was like, I'm gonna teach elementary, you know what I mean? That way when the zombie apocalypse happens, I can just take them all on, man. Take like 15 kids easy, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, hey, my name's Moes now. Thank you guys so much for being
on this game, and then I kill them in a variety of ways. <laughs>
It's a bush party, let's go! I was a very rowdy drunk, this is very embarrassing to admit. One time in the big city, I, I got in a full-on fist fight at a nightclub on the drug MDMA. Historical MDMA, not a fight drug. <laughs> ecstasy, not a fight drug. Also, if you're still calling it ecstasy, you're too old for drugs now. Lipitor is the drug we should pay on my doctor said. MDMA is less of a white drug. MDMA is more of a fight the urge to rub the back of your cab driver's head. For the lower drugs, we've been trying to stand too close to the family in front of me so they thought I was trying to join their family. I was about to play the lower drugs with the pair of hands. The pair of hands are going to be a homeless, and they're going to be a homeless family. They're going to be a homeless family. Canada. He's the new Wyoming South Carolina. He's the new Wyoming South Carolina. He's the new Wyoming South Carolina. He's the new Wyoming South Carolina.